Greetings, hello, how are you doing today? I want to answer a question today that I've been asked and I think a lot of you would like to know. It's a quick rundown of what you should be adding to your airlock for your home brew. What liquids should you put into your airlock? So I'm going to give a quick rundown of all the things you can add. So the first liquid people like to add to an airlock is simple tap water. Tap water is great for the short term. It's free, it's on demand, it's in your tap. All you need to do is turn the tap on, run the water, put your airlock under, and hey ho, your airlock is filled. Simple. Shove it into your demijohn. But the negatives of using tap water is that a lot of tap water does contain certain chemicals and chlorine. And if these get sucked back in through the airlock into your demijohn, they're not too brilliant for your wine. Second downside of using tap water is that tap water and water in general does contain bacteria. And it is a great harbour for bacteria as well. It's certainly far from sterile. And if you're making homebrew and if you're making wines and you try to avoid using sulfates and Camden tablets, as I try and do, you want to try and keep the wine as sterile as you can. So I avoid using tap water. The second liquid people like to add to their airlock is distilled water. They distill it to remove a lot of the impurities from the water in case it does get sucked back into the wine, into the demijohn, especially if there's a change in atmosphere that causes a negative pressure in the demijohn. So you eliminate the chemicals, you eliminate the metals, you eliminate the chlorides, but it still isn't sterile. The last thing you want is bacteria living in the thing that is sitting on top of your demijohn for months at a time. It's a gateway into bacteria dum. So I don't use tap water and I also don't use distilled water. Liquid number three that people like to fill their airlocks with is a sterilizing solution. Whether that is sodium metabisulfate or a Camden tablet, they fill the airlock up with their preferred steriliser and sterilising agent. That's all very well. You will create a bacteria-proof barrier in your airlock. There's no chance any bacteria will survive in that sterilising solution. So hunky-dory. However, there is always the issue of suck back and the sterilising solution going into the demijohn and potentially killing off the yeast. Not what you want during a fermentation. Your yeast makes the wine. You kill the yeast, what you have is a very, very weak solution of juice. The downside of using a sterilising solution in an airlock is that that sterilising solution is only active for about three days. Uh -huh. Three days. So you have to go through all of your demijohns and carboys, all of your airlocks, and keep on refitting the airlocks with new solution. I don't have time for that, and I doubt very much you do. I would rather be getting a new brew on the go than topping up airlocks every three days. Once those three, three and a half days have passed, what you're left with is water, and then you're back to square one. So, it's not ideal. Again, it's good for a short term. If you just want to shove an airlock in and then come back to it later and add something else to it, fantastic. I would rather use a sterilising solution than plain water or distilled water. I would come in to what I use in my airlocks once I've covered all the other options for you. And then next solution people like to add, which is again something that I don't personally use, is vodka. Vodka is a high ethanol based spirit and that being said it does prevent a lot of bacteria from living in the liquid. Not all bacteria, I know E. coli and a few other things are quite resistant to ethanol but there are two main downsides to using vodka. There are three main downsides to using, there are four main downsides to using vodka. The first is it has a very high evaporation rate. 
the vodka will evaporate in any warm weather very, very quickly. Therefore, you have to keep on drawing back and topping it up with more vodka. And that leads in to the second negative issue of using vodka in your airlocks. The rate you replace the vodka works out being more expensive than the demijohn of wine you're trying to make. I made wine because it's cheaper than buying it in the shops, so that is a big disadvantage to myself. I would rather have the wine to be at such a low price that it's worthwhile me making. But if I have to buy a bottle of vodka to make a bottle of wine, it doesn't quite balance up in my head. The third negative of using vodka in your airlocks is I don't tend to have vodka around a lot. If I've bought a bottle for the purpose of filling up the airlocks, I might use some of it, but then when I come to want to use it again, I found I have none left. And then the fourth disadvantage of using vodka is the blowback again, the suck back. If that vodka goes into your demijohn and you've taken specific gravity readings at the start and the end of fermentation and you're leaving the airlock on, you have a burst of alcohol in the demijohn. Those readings are going to go out the window. You do not know how strong the wine is. Therefore, what's the point of taking accurate measurements of the alcohol ABV if you're going to inject some vodka into it. You don't know how much. Yes, you can take another specific gravity reading later, but it just messes up with your numbers. You've drawn through all those calculations for no real gain. And now, the next thing some people tend to use in airlocks is what I personally use. Bit of a trade secret this is. It's used in commercial breweries and wineries and meaderies. Instead of using any of the previous liquids that all have their disadvantages, I use this. Food grade vegetable glycerin. Wonderful stuff. This is a winemaker's ally. It has a very high bacteria resistance because it is not water based. When the bacteria goes into your airlock and they try to grow and spawn with, with osmosis and the lipids tend to science, science, science. But basically, they can't really live in glycerin for too long and they just die off very, very quickly. Second benefit, it does not evaporate. Therefore, you do not need to check your airlocks very often at all. You can leave them be in the back of the cupboard for a month, two, three months at a time and they are fine. They will not dry out and leave a big entrance way into your demijohn. Fantastic. The third benefit is the suck back issue and the blowback. You can add glycerin to your wines and normally it gives the wine a big burst. It is actually very beneficial to a lot of wines and it will improve the overall taste and the venosity of the wine. I'll do a video about adding glycerin to wines and the benefits it can have to the actual wine. But, but it is safe, it is good, it is beneficial to add glycerin to wines, in small doses anyway. If you ever get blowback from your airlock with glycerin in, no harm will come to your wine. The only downside of glycerin in an airlock is that it is very gloopy and viscousy, very thick and rich and dense. Another benefit is that it is really, really cheap to buy. You can buy five litres for about six, seven pounds and that will keep you going for years. It is also brilliant for blowing bubbles. If you have a child, glycerin, washing up liquid, sugar, fantastic. My son loves them. So all my glycerin goes to the boy. Anyway, there are no real side effects or negatives of using glycerin in your airlocks. It's what I use, it's what I recommend, and it's what a lot of the commercial breweries tend to use as a barrier against bacteria in the fermentation vessels. So let me know what you use in your airlocks down below in the comments, because I would love to know. What is the majority of people using out there? Is it water, 
distilled water, vodka, sterilising solution, or do you use glycerin as well? If you want a few more tips and tricks about winemaking, check out this playlist up by here now, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Have fun now. Bye-bye.